we start, guys, with Zach Wilson. We've probably seen the last of him, but, you know, mm -hmm. have we? If Tim Boyle goes out and gets injured on Friday against the, uh, the Miami Dolphins, unless they make Zach Wilson the number three quarterback, we're going to see him again. So I don't want to just blanket say that's the end of his career with the Jets, but I think he's a viable quarterback for the Jets. It should have never been this case anyway, and I think moving forward, They've been embarrassed enough and have egg on the face enough that yeah. it can't be again. I'm just kind of mad because, you know, five minutes ago it was, oh, well, it's not all his fault and uh, you're, he's getting better. Well, I guess he's not because you just pulled the plug on his season, and rightfully so, but this could have been done three weeks ago, guys. Come on. Is anything that different after the Buffalo game that was after you felt after the Vegas game, after you felt about the Charger game, after you felt about the Giant game? Give me a break. Now all of a sudden when your season is effectively over, you pull the plug. And the only way you pull the plug, guys, is because you are done with him. So the only thing that would really make sense is that he's not dressing for the game against Miami and that um, there's another backup quarterback to boil. Uh, Which would be Simeon. Would you, that Simeon then dresses and that Zach is done. Because what are you going to go through it again for? Because you know, Boyle could get hurt. Why not? This offensive line stinks, and then it's back to Wilson again. How many more chances you get? So if you're going to – because if, if your season – I know it's not mathematically over, but we know this team isn't going to make the playoffs. And you decide to pull the plug, then I think by pulling the plug, you are effectively really – saying it's done, dead on arrival, Simeon's your backup to Boyle, and he never plays another down for the Jets again. Just to set yourself up for him playing another game would make you look like the biggest embarrassment in the world. Do not dress him. He should never play another down for the Jets again, period. Um, I, it's hard for me to disagree with that. It, it, how could you go back again? We already played that game last year. It's even worse this year. I just wonder, Michael, yesterday, what was the actual decision-making process? That they went, all right, that was it. Two minutes left in the third quarter. This is the moment we're ending the experiment. Because you could have done this so much earlier to try to salvage the season. I wonder who made the decision and why they made it when they did. Well, I think it was just out of desperation because throughout this whole ordeal, I've been having contact with people within the Jet organization. Because I keep saying, well, why does that keep playing? Why does that keep playing? And the answers I kept getting back, the other guys are not better than this guy. And if you look at, if take a deep dive, everybody listening, take a deep dive on Tim Boyle. He's awful. Mm -hmm. He's awful. You're not exactly plugging in, uh, let, let's say, Joshua Dobbs. You're not. Tim Boyle is, is about what Zach Wilson is, and you'll see that on Friday against the Dolphins. And Trevor Simeon has had a history of not being a great quarterback. I think, Peter, the answer to the question is they were a rock bottom and they figured they can't go any lower right. and they had to have some sort of change. But they truly don't believe that Tim Boyle's better. They just think maybe, maybe just a different look will solve things. Their season's slipping away. If they lose on Friday, they're done. You can't say no, mathematically they're done now, but if they lose Friday, it's over. But, but, but you made the change, so they have to think the season's over now. Because if, if the feeling was that Wilson gives them the best chance to win, then all of a sudden, with two minutes to go, in the third quarter, you decide, all right, now's the time we think Boyle gives us a better chance to win. Uh, no, they all of a sudden didn't, he didn't all of a sudden become a better quarterback. And listen, Wilson's no worse than he was at the start of the season. And so... It, to me, whether they, whether Sala wants to admit it coming up later on in this hour or whether anybody around the Jets wants to admit it, they were telling you, we think we're done. And we're mm. done with Wilson. We're done with this season. Let somebody else play. But don't you think, Don, if they think they're done, why not just play Wilson out? Well, I mean, what good is it? Tim Bobby, Boyle's not your future. Trevor Simeon's not your future. Maybe Wilson finds because, something. I no. just think that they made the change because they were desperate. Because, it looked so bad. No, because I think somebody finally, because I, I still believe that there was there was some sort of an order, some sort of an edict that Wilson had to play. I don't, I don't know whether it was actually said or understood or assumed so you, or whatever it was. So do you was. think that Sala flew in the face of that? And, and I think Sala probably just, all right, enough. I'm going to end up losing my job anyway. I cannot continue in good conscience to continue to send him out there. I've got another room of players who need to play. Somebody else has to play. Everybody, I'm holding Carter accountable for a penalty. I'm releasing guys because they're not playing well, and I'm going to continue to trot him out there and play. I can't. You can't do it, Michael. You can't. You can't continue to defend him. What happened last week, Michael, finally couldn't defend him anymore. 
and and now he goes out there, plays worse. You can't keep doing it, Michael. And I think finally, whatever, whether it's Salah, whoever it was that felt like we've got to make the change, finally put his foot down and said, I, I can't keep doing it. I, I can't keep defending him. I can't keep sending him out there. I've got a, a, another room of players that I have to coach. I can't in good conscience continue to send him out there. And I think that yesterday we saw for the first time the defense cracked. They've had so much pressure to be perfect, it finally cracked. It, it finally cracked against an offense that was so bad that the offensive coordinator was fired five days before. And they put up all those points on the Jets. The defense finally gave in. Yep. They could not handle it anymore. And if you want to, like, have a picture worth a thousand words, when Zach Wilson in the third quarter is running out of bounds and runs into Solomon, they both go down to the ground. That's, that's the picture. He, if Robert yeah. Sala's career with the Jets is over, Zach Wilson took him down. That's what happened on that play. First of all, picking him with the number two pick, folly. And then staying with him after you benched him twice and then having him as the backup quarterback to a 40-year-old, none of it, none of it, none of it will ever make sense to me nope. until somebody steps forward and goes, this is really the reason why. A told us B had to, had to be C, and that's why it happened. Because if you're a good football man, the guy that lost his job last year to Mike White, you decided to have him back up Aaron Rodgers. It, 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 to this day, it doesn't make sense. No. You gave your season away. No. It makes no sense. You, you, yeah, you had to do it. And so all of the talk about he's getting better, it, no, it was all just, I got to say this, but now I've had enough. Because really, Michael, if he was getting better, then what would be the reason? To, why, why yesterday and not any other time? He wasn't getting better. I think they were lying to us. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, But, but why were they lying? Because they will cover up the fact that the other two guys aren't good. <laughs> or, yeah, the, 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 now all of a sudden they're good enough? That's what, that's what I'm trying no, to say. No, I think it's desperation time now. Well, I, come on. Do you really think anything's going to happen? Is, is they were down 9 nothing, Peter. And I, I, honestly, it felt like any other team in the NFL was down 32 nothing. Is there a possibility that it's as blatant as this has all been the owner? And literally yesterday at that point, like he sent the text message, all right, enough is enough, move on. I don't know if it was that deep. I can't say the involvement of Woody. We've had Rex Ryan who worked under Woody, said he never does stuff like that, so we'll take him at his word. I just think that if there was some edict from above about playing Zach Wilson, and I've, I've said this about analytic managers in baseball too, at some point you're going to lose your job. Right. And if you're going to lose your job, you might as well lose your job with your conviction rather than with these silly little numbers that people are forcing you to do. So maybe Robert Sala goes, I'm losing my job here. I'm not losing it. Uh, continuing to play this guy who can't play. Can't play. We've been, we're not football experts, everybody. Let, let's lift the curtain on this, okay? We, we follow the game. We love the game. He's not good. He's never been good. Anybody who thought he was good is out of their mind. Have you watched him play? He can't play. But at some point, your reputation gets sullied when you continue to back up the guy that everybody in the world knows doesn't deserve the chance. And maybe it was just time. Salah like, Sala could lose his job. All of the doors that have flown open for the Jets going into this week make these losses hurt even more. Because you can't sit there. You can't honestly say, Michael, when this season is over, could you really look in the mirror as any member of the Jets organization and say there was no chance to make the playoffs once Aaron Rodgers got hurt? Could you honestly say that? When, when you look at how the doors are flung open, when you look at some of the talent this team had, well, no, I that if there saying. was a competent backup quarterback on this team, that they wouldn't be very much alive for a playoff spot right now? Absolutely. But once he went down, now we could say they had no chance because of the well, guy that was backing up. Right, but but why was that the case, all right? Now, I, I can't blame we'll Sala for that. Maybe there'll be a book written in 10 years. I don't Maybe. know if we'll ever know. Now, they, obviously, they went into the season, well, no way Aaron Rodgers could get hurt. He got hurt four downs into the season four plays into the season and you had a bye week like you couldn't bring in anybody that could have saved your season i don't care if carson wentz is the biggest you know what in the history of football that nobody could stand being in the room with him you tell me that if carson wentz was the quarterback week two of this team of this season that they wouldn't be in contention for a playoff spot if not possibly the division that's how poor your quarterback play has been. I know the offensive line stinks. I know they drop passes and all the, the, the false starts and the penalties and the self-inflicted wounds. But at least a decent quarterback 
would be worth a couple of more wins. And this game on Friday could be two teams battling for the division instead of four and six and pretty much done. And with also Tim Boyle as your quarterback. Here's a dirty little secret. After that loss yesterday, the Jets are four and six. The Jets, the Super Bowl bound Jets, right? The Giants without their quarterback, without most of their offensive line, having a third string non drafted quarterback, they have one fewer win. One fewer win. And we'll get to the Giants a little bit later on. One thing I want to do, I don't know if Don and Peter agree with me on this. Robert Sala, to me, deserves some blame, but not the lion's share of it. He doesn't put the roster together. We all like Joe Douglas. We do. He did a bad job. He did a bad job, A, drafting Zach Wilson. That will never be erased off his resume, ever. He owns that forever. And then doubling down and bringing him back as the backup quarterback, leaving your team naked, absolutely naked, if a 39-year-old, soon-to-be 40-year-old quarterback gets hurt. And to think that he wouldn't get hurt, look at all the quarterbacks that go down. Ten rookie quarterbacks have started this season because of yeah. injuries or ineffectiveness to veterans. Mm -hmm. To have the arrogance to think that Aaron Rodgers might not get hurt and you're going to turn over the keys to a Lamborghini to a guy who can't ride a tricycle. That's what you did when you put this team together. So I'm not blaming Sala for that. His hand was forced to play this guy. And the other big thing that's a big, big deal, their offensive line has been ravaged, ravaged by injuries and ineffectiveness. They have no continuity whatsoever. That's not on Robert Sala. And those are the two biggest culprits. And one other thing, I'll throw this in too. Hackett has proven to be very unimaginative as an offensive coordinator. I'm sorry he has. And the only reason he's here is because of Aaron Rodgers. You're going to put all of that on Robert Sala? I'm not. And he didn't have his quarterback. Now, maybe it will be better with Boyle because at least he had Boyle in Green Bay. But there's a resume there even without Rodgers. Took Jacksonville to the championship game with Blake Bortles because Blake Bortles was his guy. He doesn't seem to work with quarterbacks that are not his guy. Or was it the fact that your, your quarterback, nobody could work with this guy? That there was never going to be any chance to be successful? Guys, it's an offensive league. How do you not score touchdowns in this league? Every rule is in favor of you. We've seen quarterbacks come in and do the job. We gotta get off the scrap heap and throw touchdown passes, like you said. The you know, Devito is a is a is a practice squad player, and he threw three touchdown passes in a game. I mean, now we've seen that all year, right, Don? I mean, how many uh, different examples have we seen of guys who can come in and do something better than we've seen Zach Wilson? Peter, is it outrageous? Correct me, because maybe I'm, I'm getting into hyperbolics here. Is it outrageous to say that Tommy DeVito yesterday played better than Zach Wilson has ever played oh. for an entire game? Well, let me, you know what? And you know he's what, an I mean, undrafted sir, player. You know what? Statistically, it's, abs it's just true. Well, I mean, he, has, has he had... The, Zach hasn't had a 250-yard, oh. three-touchdown, no-interception game. Tommy DeVito did something yesterday Zach Wilson has never done in his career. Throw three touchdown passes in a game. 